All right. Thanks for listening to Passive Investors Playbook. Um, this episode is with Curtis May. I had a great conversation with him. Uh, Curtis had dreams of playing in the NBA, but realized uh, he was going to have to pivot. Uh, Curtis May is the founder of Practical Wealth Solutions. His company works with people to build the principles that help them achieve financial freedom. Uh, Curtis is a really big proponent of infinite banking, also called IBC, and, and we'll get into that in this episode, but it's basically uh, using a life insurance policy uh, and investing uh, in whole life and, and uh, taking cash value and investing that the way you would like. Uh, I'm a proponent of that as well. I've talked about that on several other episodes. Um, thank you so much for listening. Please leave us a five-star review uh, on the platform that you listen to this podcast episode and feel free to reach out to me if you do have any questions. Thank you. Welcome to Passive Investors Playbook. I'm your host, Charlie Hardage. In each episode, we'll sit down with successful people that turn to real estate to build and grow their wealth. We do a deep dive into why they chose real estate and what makes it so attractive to them. We explore why people in their industry could also benefit from passively investing in real estate. Whether you're a beginner or an experienced investor, a doctor or a professional athlete, love your job or hate your job, our show is here to help you build a profitable real estate portfolio while maximizing your free time and minimizing stress. So sit back, relax, and get ready to learn from some of the best in the business. Welcome to Passive Investor's Playbook. All righty. Thanks for listening to the show today. As always, I am Charlie Hardage, and joining me today is my amazing guest, Curtis May. Curtis is the host of the Practical Wealth Show podcast and the creator and owner of Practical Wealth Advisors. Curtis has been planning for in individuals for more than 35 years, and he is passionate about helping his clients save money and live the very best life they can right now. The primary focus of his financial planning firm is to help individuals and families become financially free by following the principles of wealth creation that have endured for centuries around the world. Curtis, I'm so excited to talk to you today. I love uh, love the the topic we're about to discuss. Uh, thanks for being here. Do you mind sharing with the audience a little bit about you and your your firm? Yes, me too. Let's go. So my name is uh, Curtis May, as he says, and our firm is Practical Wealth Solutions. Practical because it's basic. Two plus two is four, right? So this is not not that 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 complicated. And uh, and so what we do, Charles, I teach principles or we teach principles that um, which are because we like principles from Ray Dow's book. Principles don't change. All successful people operate by principles. Right. And um, and so we teach principles that help our clients become and more importantly, remain financially free. And so that's 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 why we exist. And so if you want the idea of principles, if any of you guys have ever read uh, The Richest Man in Babylon, I teach chapter two of that, basically. <laughs> OK, the seven cures for a lean purse. And uh, it's really very basic. And it's, it's stuff that you want to be because mostly if you're on here, if you're listening, you're successful. And uh, Charlie, what I do is I tell people Curtis is the defensive coordinator, right? Your offense, right? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, here's what you do at money to generate growth and cash flow. I want to make sure that you keep more of what you make and pass on to your kids intact or your charities intact. So that's uh, and so you know, we've been doing this for about the uh, god, I hate to admit it. Uh, I got my license in 1985, my insurance license <laughs> and my investment license a couple years after that, which I let go in 2000s. I don't do investments anymore. And uh, when I realized the NBA was not looking for 5'11", two guards, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there, there's been a couple of them. There's been right? a couple, but I, I went with a mediocre handle. Yeah. You know? No, no, that was, uh, I, you know, here I'm barely on a team at this Division II school. I was like, ah, finding a new dream. And I got my insurance license in college. You oh, know. 
Very well, because cool. I'd always, you know, my family always been self-employed. So I, 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 you know, I thought you majored in business to go into business, it, you know, and um, uh, my dad, I've heard from the time I was seven, boy, you'll never make any money work for somebody else. So I, I never got that go get a good job talk. And uh, so I always had little hustles going on, even in school, selling sporting goods for a local sporting goods store. I was doing all kinds of stuff, you know, and uh, I just somebody showed me a check for four hundred dollars. This one made for hours worth of work. I was like, doing what? He showed me. I said, well, this knucklehead can do it. I could do it. And then, but I, the nerd part of me, where I was working on some paper, I was in the library and I was in the finance section. I just, I, I got off on some tangent for like an hour, just going into all these books. I was like, oh, I like this stuff. And here we go. I was, I, I was hoping I was a cool nerd because I was all sitting basketball, but I was pretty smart you know and yeah. uh um and and um just was really good at finding whatever information about what i wanted to find out about so you know when somebody uh we'll talk about this later introduced me to uh i reverenced that poor dad which changed my whole philosophy about personal finance and then probably within months of that i read well maybe a year of that i read um i found i discovered i don't even know how uh becoming your own banker and Nelson then Nash. Nelson Nash and um, didn't completely understand it. I was still like evangelical about bot term investor difference, but it kind of cracked my armor, so to speak. And I just got into it and then I started, you know, reading the bibliography like I do and his bibliography, start studying Austrian economics and creature from Jekyll Island. And, you know, somebody, they red pilled me. Right. So now I'm, you know, never met a conspiracy I didn't like. No, no, just kidding. <laughs> uh, have have a lot of other questions about the conspiracy, but maybe we'll talk about that off. Okay. But, uh, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> no, that was, that was it. I, that was a long answer to your question. So, man, no, I I love that. Okay, so um, you mentioned uh, all successful people use principles. Uh, you read uh, "Richest Man in Babylon," and um, you, Curtis, you teach chapter two. Um, I love your analogy. I'm, I'm, I love sports. I love your analogy of you are the defensive uh, coordinator. Uh, I do more of the offensive side. Um, your family has always been self-employed, which I think is is amazing because I feel like most people, uh, myself included, don't go and you know work for someone. Right? That's the safest route. Now I disagree with that a lot, but. I didn't, you know, when I started, so you my get career. fired for one or two reasons, any reason or no reason at all. So it is not as safe as Raul. It's just, you know, it's the it's, easiest, it's, 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 but, but it's, it's, you gotta either, de- I, cause I think you can develop it. You don't have to necessarily, I don't think people are born entrepreneurs, but you have to learn as a, um, how to be a work creator. Like, you yeah. know, Dan Sullivan said, you got to learn to live in the performance economy. And we're not trained to do that. And there's emotional stuff. Your spouse has got to be on board. I mean, there's a lot of other stuff that goes with that. But, you know, fortunately, I was single. My dad said, look, when you eat, your whole family eats. Yeah. <laughs> so try stuff. Man, I, I I love that. I love that your dad pushed you into uh, going into business for you as opposed to for someone else. Uh, I, you know, sorry that uh, NBA didn't work out for you, but, yeah. um, you know, it, <laughs> I, you know, like you, Curtis, I read Rich Dad, Poor Dad, changed my whole financial, you know, mindset. And and a lot of the audience has had, had the exact same story of that yeah. too, right? Yeah. And then you read uh, Be Your Own Bank, uh, Be Your Own Banker by Nelson Nash. Um, I I think this strategy, and, and you mentioned the, the, the kind of famous strategy by term life insurance. So that's anywhere from 10 to 30 years or so. Um, and invest the difference. Most you buy term for two reasons. Uh, it's much cheaper, and they only pay out seven percent of their policies. Right? It's less and, than that. It's like less than two percent. Okay. Um, and, and so for for the insurance company, they're making bank on that and not having to pay it out because you know if you buy it, uh, you might pass away or you will pass away, but not in that 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 right uh term, most right? of the, that's why it doesn't pay right and it's nothing so let hear me i'm not saying that i sell lots of term insurance okay because i've paid over a dozen death claims so people do dial this stuff right yeah. and so 
when you use term, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a tool, right? So saying, yeah, cause I'll be on call. I've been on calls like on clubhouse. Oh, I don't, I don't like term. We only do whole life. Really? Then you're leaving people underinsured because most people can't afford to get their maximum value. I was on yeah. the phone with a client yesterday. I was like, well, you know, you all oh, just need insurance. I said, well, have you ever, you know what the insurance company think you can have? And he was like 47. I said, well, they'll give you your income times 20. What? You know, and it turned out that was like $1.4 million. So he wasn't even thinking about that. So most people are underinsured, right? Yeah. And so now we're going to use term insurance for that. Okay. For because and then we'll still do whole life, but that's a different structure because it's more of a saving strategy. So when you're thinking about whole life, oh, it's expensive. It's not structured right. And it's it's not what does it cost, is how much can you save? a year right. or a month because it's just like a savings plan on steroids. Yeah. And that's what, once you view it and use it like it's supposed to your whole, your thought process, if you read the book, your thought process will change. How much does it cost to how much can I put in this thing? Right. Yeah. I, I, I love that. Um, and I, the audience knows, or if they've heard uh, some of the other episodes, I actually uh, about three years ago, I bought a whole life policy uh, I've not used that yet to invest in real estate. Uh, I'm going to probably in the next 12 months or so. But I, it took me a long time. I educate. I, I did it by myself, which is the wrong answer. And what I do all the time is try to figure it out myself to make sure it's not a scam and someone's just trying to sell me something. But then when I figured it out, I was like, how can I keep doing this and 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 buy more and buy more? So um, you, you mentioned uh, principles earlier. Um, when, when at the very beginning, all successful people use principles. And I know um, at, at Practical Wealth Solutions, you and your team, Curtis, have designed this principles of personal finance. I'd love to love to you know dive into that a little bit. Um, can you talk about maybe what those principles are, what that looks like, and, and just uh, give us an overview of that? Sure, sure. If y'all check out Practical Wealth. Uh, dot net you'll see it on there because we put it out there like boom you know what is principles based planning but it's it's we create like a one page game plan where we organize your finances in accordance to the principles right so there are five there's what we call the five principles and three rules of investing so let's talk about the principles so principle one is save okay save what save 15 percent or more of your gross income okay and so let me, let me, for y'all are thinking your 401k doesn't count because that's not saving. Let me define saving, safe, liquid, accessible, guaranteed. Okay. And so you've got to say, because see people, you know, what we teach is a difference between what we call the accumulation theory, buy and hold dollar cost average, get out of debt by term investor difference. And the, what wealthy people and institutions do, which are, this what we call the velocity method where they teach velocity uh cash flow leverage you you know and so it's a different it can literally completely 180 degrees different so the principles are designed to create velocity so the first rule one is save the second principle this is where we get into the defensive because if you can't do the first part you can't because people think they're supposed to invest first if there's five things investing is number five Right. Yeah. And so the second one is you have to play defense. We call that maximum protection. Right. So you have to look at because the what's the purpose of insurances? I'm not talking about life insurance, insurance, asset protection, estate planning, all the liability coverage, all of that falls in under mass protection. We literally review all of that, that stuff. People, do you have, you know, full liability coverage on your auto? You know, what if you are in an accident? Because you life, you're gonna have one or three problems. You know, and we'll ask clients, you know, if something, you know, while we're saving and while you're working on building an empire, what could happen? What could go wrong? Because I try not to make declarative statements. I want people to think because it's your money. It's not Curtis's money. Right. Yeah. And so you could die. They'll say I, I could get sick. I could get hurt. Right. You could have a fire. You could get sued. Well. And all of that would derail your plan. OK, so how do you protect against that? Well, you transfer risk through insurance to to the to the insurance company to protect you, to indemnify you. Right. Make you whole. 
is the purpose of insurance. So, and so, or, or um, uh, so that's the, the second, the concept is maximum protection, playing defense so that if, so, if, if something you get, you know, if you, you, you get hurt and you can't work, that's what disability insurance is for. If yeah. you die, that's what life insurance is for. That's, what we, that's why we start with what's the maximum you can get because too many people in the financial world, they do needs analysis, which needs is like minimum. The third principle uh, is full replacement of assets at death guarantee, or we call it leaving a legacy of, of uh, wealth and the wisdom to go along with that wealth. But we want the guarantee. So the reason I do that, so there's a lot of people are touting this, this, this product, you know, not getting into products today, but one of my least favorite products is Index Universal Life, right? And so, but the reason I, you, that is definitely inappropriate. Hear me, guys, because you'll hear people talking this nonsense. For Infinite Banking, Nelson Nash, who I learned it from, says never to use that, okay? So that's good enough for me. You ain't proven on his work, okay? <laughs> and two um, is for place of asset at death guaranteed. So it's nothing in that product guaranteed, which is the reason why we use whole life as part of the, you know, we want to make sure that your wealth transfers tax-free guaranteed. The fourth principle, trying to be too long, wouldn't it, is liquidity. Most people are just, they don't have, they don't save enough. They have no access to capital. They need liquidity. So we teach our principle is six to 12 months of your income liquid. Oh, Curtis, I got 10,000. Can I start investing? No. What do you make a year? Oh, I make I make uh, 100,000. Okay, well, that's $8,000 a month. So your emergency fund is is uh, that times three. Guys, your first, you know, your first three months is your emergency fund. And then everything from four to 12 is your opportunity fund. And then now that is the money that you begin to buy assets, buy or build assets. So most people are redlining because they're so inherited because they're chasing rates or return, right? And so you need to be liquid because see, planning is about provisioning and protecting because the plan has got to work no matter what. You can't have a plan that only works when markets are up, when you know, when the sun is shining, okay? Because most time it's going to rain, okay? <laughs> and so you've got to prepare for the rain. That's just common sense. And then the fifth one, which gets back to where I say you're the offensive coordinator, then we focus on velocity, right? And so velocity, we want our clients to buy assets. What's an asset? Something that puts money in your pocket every month. And so you're, instead of chasing, I want to get this million dollars in a 401k, uh, you want assets that send you a check. Because our goal is to get, in our system, we call it, I won't say the whole word out, but we call it getting to a position of F you. Okay. And uh, which is passive income, twice your expenses. So we want you to be, because see, financial freedom is a capability, meaning that you have assets that throw off enough cash flow. So if you don't want to work, you don't have to. So those are the, the foundations. So we make people set up the principles, right? And then, Charlie, my framework is, and then I'm going to stop talking, is principles drive strategy. So what people, talk about IBC in our system, we make it step two because I need to lay a foundation of how to manage your money. Principles drive strategy and then strategy drives tactics. A tactic is a product you buy, right? So it, we talked about life insurance. Infinite banking is using properly structured dividend paying whole life, properly structured, right? As a place to store your liquidity. So that's what makes up principle four. We store it past having what I call ATM money in the bank, then we store it in policies, plural, right? It's a system of policies. I have people that have like 15 policies, right? Because they make more money. And Nelson would say, well, it's going into somebody's bank. Why not yours, right? Yeah. Banking just meaning, for any regulators out there, right? Banking means creating a storage, right? So it's just, a, it's just, a, it's not acronym. It's a, uh, it's, um, analogy for storage, right? Creating a pool of capital that you control that can move at cost and meet some needs you have, right? And that's what is not a magic money box. It's just a place to store cash. That's all, all right. I'll say about that. Yeah. Cool far as go. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So your, your uh, five principles of personal finance, uh, save 15% of uh, gross income, does not include 401ks, 
um, still on defense playing maximum protection. Um, so that's where insurance comes in. I'm sure it's more than just insurance, but that that's where you, you kind of do a deep dive. His insurance is, is asset protection, is entities, is trust, yep. all that we chunk under mass of, of yep. maximum protection. Cool. And, and as far as uh, you meant asset protection and, and things like that, uh, I'm not going to get into all that, but uh, it, it would be like LLCs, trusts, you yes. know, just to yes. reduce. I don't, and I will refer that out, but that's, you know, yeah, we organize it. So this is where you have a conversation because people will hear bits and, oh, I need a trust. I need a, well, okay. As I look at your, you don't have any money yet. What do you need a trust for? Tell yeah. me, and I want them to tell me why I need a trust because all they heard was, some bite on IG, yeah. you know, talking about this, but you got to look at your whole thing. And then, okay, if that's the case, I'll, we'll, I'll introduce you to somebody that can help you set up, set it up first, but that's not your first step, you know, yeah. oh, Chris, I want to build business credit. That's not your first step, you know? And uh, so there's an order in how you do stuff. And that's, yeah. that's what we try to people. You do the first things first. Love that. Um, the third principle, uh, full replacement of assets at uh, the death uh, guarantee, I think, is is um, what you said there. Uh, fourth principle is liquidity. And then the fifth is velocity. And that's where you buy assets um, it, that that pay you, right? That, that pay you mm-hmm. pay you. And that's where the passive income uh, comes in. And um, I love those principles. I, I want to get into the strategy in just a second. And I know, Curtis, uh, you've said kind of both uh, several times, but just to be clear for the audience, IBC stands for Infinite Banking Concept. The Infinite Banking Concept. Yep. Yes. And and I love this because, it, you know, it, it is a total, and you mentioned this too, when you read uh, Become Your Own Banker by Nelson Nash, but it's a it's a totally different strategy that 99% of people have not heard of, but uh, the wealthy out, out of the wealthy, mo- I'd say most of them are using it, right? So it's Absolutely. the the one percent. Our president using- has four policies. Okay, yeah. Yeah. you know, so it's it's not unknown. It's I always tell people it's not new. It's just new to you. Most right. insurance agents don't know how to do it. Like they yes. think they understand insurance, but they don't know how to structure it because structuring it right means you back out 56% of your commission. So they're not really trying to do that. Right. And uh so it's 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 because literally so here's the book, right? Look how beat up my book is. Yeah. See the, I've had to <laughs> I've had to uh uh dig it laminate it because it was falling apart. It's I've created extra pages. I use it as a journal yeah. and because I read it all the time because it's, you know, what Nelson would say is the more you see, the more you see, you didn't see. And yeah. so if you talk to somebody and they literally don't beat you over the head with the book, they don't do infinite banking. Let's right. be clear. All right. Yeah. Just so we're, you know, we're clear on that because you, if you don't talk to me for two minutes, it's like, did you get the book? Well, I need you to get the book. We ain't talking the same language, you know, and, and you don't have to get the book before you work me, but it's helpful. Our conversations are better because otherwise it's too much hard work for me. Oh, you know, Dave said this or Susie, uh, call yeah. him, call them, you know, get some term insurance and call your cousin in prime America. Keep it moving. Yeah. Get out my face. <laughs> and, <laughs> so, and, and, and so the, the IBC, the, the infinite banking concept, um, I, I love this concept for me. It was a total, holy cow. I've never heard of this. Um, this is amazing. Can't believe this is new. Um, after starting uh, starting to research it more, I realized this is not new at all. Insurance companies, uh, you know, the, some of the ones that are doing this, they they pay dividends every single year for over 160 years in a row. Haven't missed a haven't missed a um, a, a dividend payment. And w- what's great is, you know, y- you've mentioned the word structure uh, maybe a handful of times now. And uh, after after this, I'll let you talk too. But you know. Most insurance com- uh, insurance companies don't do this, and then the ones that do it, most of the insurance agents don't know how to do it, and so it, it's it's a very 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 niche product. But when you use it properly, holy cow, there's so much you can do from it, and that that's just one piece of this puzzle uh, that you're talking about, Curtis. Um, but I, I'd love for you to go into more depth about the IBC. Uh, infinite banking as a whole, and and we'll use those interchangeably. But um, uh, I, I love this topic so much. Yeah, and sometimes in our system, like I have my presentation called the private reserve. Some companies don't want you to be a bank, that kind of stuff. 
But basically what you're doing is, and so one of the first things that we talk about, Charlie, so look, if you're going to create maximum wealth, you have to create maximum efficiency first, right? And so we, what I do is I help people. One of the things I do, first thing I do is look at people's cash flow because we got to, you know, if you aren't saving money, like that's where I start with the save the 15% or more of your gross income, you cannot do infinite banking. Okay. Because it's a saving strategy. So that's where the premium comes from of, of overfunding. So if, if somebody's making like a hundred grand a year, guess what? Curtis wants you saving 15,000 a year. Okay. Now, not necessarily in a policy. I don't start people there. Right. So this is a, a good distinction. So one of the things I do is we set up people, we teach them to create a wealth capture account. So I just want the people to back into how they would do this. So some of y'all have lump sum sitting around, then, you know, you ask yourself, where's the best place to store cash? So if you look at the benefits be, uh, a, a of a permanent policy, which I'll, I'm going to give you a report later, where you can check it out. And versus where people store it cash, right? Because if people, well, oh, well, my EFT is doing this and my mutual fund is doing this and is doing better than the whole life. There, that's not a, a, a fair, that's not a comparison, right? Because it's a saving strategy. So savings, savings accounts, money market accounts, CDs, your mattress, that's whole life. That's savings, right? So that's what you got to do the proper comparisons because you're it's it's not designed to to generate rates return it's a place to store your liquidity okay so that's one you got to know where it fits so it's not um uh so now what happens is once you understand that okay i've got to capitalize i got to pay a premium i'm going to build up savings i have to capitalize so most people you know uh nelson says you know the rules of banking don't be afraid to capitalize pay a premium think long range see most people think too short term term, don't steal the peas, which means if you take a loan, pay it back with interest and rethink your thinking. So, so those are certain of the fundamentals. It's not an investment strategy, right? So it's where does it fit into your continuum? Well, where are you store? I, I had a business owner had $100,000 in a checking account earning nothing. Nothing. I was like, oh, how much do you need to uh, available that you, that you just want to have you know, available. Oh, I only need about, you know, he had like 250,000. I said, how much you need available? Like 50. Well, what if you could move this somewhere? Because you think about it, if you've got uh, 50,000, 100,000, right? And you take out, withdraw 50,000. We call in our system, drain the tank, because we do an illustration of, of a tank of money. Well, people see, this is what real estate investors think. They'll say, well, okay, I got, I'm putting, I'm taking money out of this account and I'm going to put it into the house. I'm going to put in a big down payment. I'm putting in this syndication, right? But so, yes, it's over here in the house, the asset. But what if you could have your cake and eat it too, right? Because what you can do with the policy is once you have sufficient capital, you can collateralize your savings. So the savings is still there and you can borrow against your savings. You're borrowing the insurance company money. You ain't borrowing your own money. You're you're using they're using your money as collateral. And so the money you saved in the death benefit is collateral. So now you can take a loan, put that same money in your investment, in your syndication, in your down payment, in your I've got clients that do private lending, right? And so now your money is in the asset you just bought, but it's also still in the policy earning yeah. money. Three yep. percent and dividends, and growing tax-free, and it's insurance. You know, it's all these things going on, and you still have the investment. And so now if you're buying a, you know, because we teach people you can use a policy for really two things, major capital purchases, right? That is defined as anything that you can't pay for in full within your monthly cash flow, right? So if it's a big ticket, a car, uh, a vacation that's four or 5,000, you know, don't liquidate your savings. You could put on a credit card, get the points, get back from vacation, take a policy loan, pay the card off, and then make, if you're willing to give them 23% and you know you can get their money from the insurance company at four, then you create a payback plan to the policy at 23% or at 10% or whatever. That's banking, right? Sure. And so you get uninterrupted compounding. So I know I'm kind of all over the place here, but I want people to get a, a work use. It's 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 a saving strategy 
where you can basically make your dollar do multiple things at the same time. Yeah. Right. It's not a magic money box. You're only borrowing it some money you can put in it that you put in there. But once it's in there, now you have access to capital. You've got money that you can get. To. I have a client that has we been working there like four years. She probably has a quarter million dollars in cash value. And um, she's like a, a really uh, high level real estate investor. She can if she wants to bypass hard money lenders. Uh, she has enough capital to or she can find it, acquire it. Uh, do what she has to do. She's got her contractors on standby. Then she gets it done. She she does the bird method, right? So she, yeah. she uh, refinances it, pulls her money back out, pays off the policy loans, put what additional money that will hold in there, and then boom, off to her next deal. And that's where the money's come from. And uh, and so she's got like eight, okay? But we didn't start out at eight. It just as her has her investments grew as her business grew we just expanded the system to accommodate her cash flow and her the capital that she was generating and so charlie stopped me i hope that that made some sense <laughs> no it, it did and i i want to recap that and, and maybe break it down um a little bit more but basically what you're saying curtis is instead of having and uh you recommend the uh the the fund or the uh you know liquidity liquidity and then some money in, in an account but instead of um, investing directly into an apartment complex or a house or a car, instead of buying a car, not investing, big difference, but instead of buying a car, you're saying take the insurance's money, the insurance company's money and in, uh, invest in real estate or buy a car. Um, and then you're, you're, you're using their money, but you're still getting the death benefit. You're still uh, able to get interest and dividends on that full amount so instead of having your money do one thing, you're having your money do multiple things. And I think that's, that's, it's an easy con. Well, it's easy for me now. It took so, it was just like, I, I was lost when I first started hearing about it and learning about it because I was like, that doesn't make any sense. If I'm putting my money here, how's my money growing here? Right. But with it, when the property or the property, when the policy is properly mm -hmm. structured then you can still invest in real estate. Uh, that that's it's not like it's one or the other. Right, you, it's not either or right, because it's, right. it's an and product, right? Yes. And so I've got people where like, all right, Curtis, I need to show proof of funds. We just send them a screenshot of their account. Yeah. Because they do it. Like, so if you ever look on a resident, if any guy you're buying like residential properties, look on the application and it asks on the 1003, do you have any cash value in your life insurance? Yes. OK, because banks do this. It's not unfamiliar to them. You know, you can collateralize. You can sign a collateral assignment and and they'll, you know, not even take a policy loan and they'll give you like great rates because they know if you default, they'll just suck it right out of your policy. I yeah. mean, it's like a financial Swiss army knife. You just have to you have to get somebody who knows how to do it. But it's 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 your rents are coming in. Your profits from your syndications are coming in. That cash flow is hitting your account. So now. It's you don't, you don't want to leave all your money in the bank with banks going under. And so what we do is we insurance companies don't go out of business. Right. So we move that money. Uh, some of that you need what I call ATM money. Right. So you need some money in the bank to do business. But past like a month or so, depending wherever you need for operations, then we we teach our clients to sweep that money out and hold it in their policies because, you know, you can get to the money in three, four days. I mean, it's, what, what emergency do you have? You need, you know. 30,000, 50,000, 100,000 dollars sitting in cash. Yeah. Okay. Uh in cash cash, like in a bank doing nothing but losing money to inflation, right? And so that's the thing. So if you look at the system, forget about the policies. So many people are caught with policy, what company, what's the dividend rate? That doesn't mean anything. That's a bunch of uh distinctions without meaning, okay? It's because it's nothing's going to repay. What is Ann Rand saying? You, you money is a tool, but enough is going to replace you as a driver, right? So you have to drive it. That, and, and so you have to manage the policy. You have to, it's really, that it should be named being your own money manager. It yeah. will be a more accurate description of how to handle the policy because you, if you manage it well, it'll do better in whatever illustration, what dividend rate, that doesn't mean anything. Is are you being a good banker? Are you being a good money manager? Are you looking at the policy as, okay, 
I've got my job. I've got my business. I've got my real estate business. And Nelson Nash says in the book, everybody needs two businesses, the ones that gives them a paycheck and the banking business, right? To, to, to fund it. Because the, see the, because the, the thing is that his premise was that 35 cent of every dollar is leaving your household in a form of debt to others, right? And so 34.5, he says in a book. So we're giving up control of the banking function. And so his, so we're chasing returns, but 30% of our money is leaving our household in the form of taxes. 35% is leaving your house in a form of debt. And you, most people aren't even saving 10% of income. They're trying to make that money do backflips. Yeah. Right. And and so since you don't put away any money, you have to chase returns. Oh, I got to get 12% of my mutual fund. What's it doing? That's because you don't save enough damn money. Right. Yeah. To 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 buy a real thing. And so if you're going to buy a real asset or be a real investor, you need capital. Right. Because most good investments are illiquid and you need money. Yeah. You don't get anywhere $200 a month in Robin Hood or Acorn or whatever. Yeah. All right. Okay. I'm not going to call people out, but think <laughs> I, bigger. <laughs> I, man, Curtis, I, I I actually had written down control and 401k. Control. And, and quit use the control. <laughs> well, I, I wrote down control and 401k, and then you said the word control, uh, which which I, I smiled uh, because, the, you know, I want to also make the distinction here. If you in, if you put money in a 401k, you don't control that, right? It, that's that's when you retire in you know ten years or fifty years, however old you are now, and and when you retire, which is a flawed um, concept in of itself. That's another that's another show. <laughs> yeah, I definitely agree. Uh, you, you don't have control over it, but I do want to make the distinction here with IBC with infinite banking. You do have the control. It's not like I I am saying, hey, I want this policy. Well, Curtis is now my invest, uh, my my um, uh, financial advisor, and he's the one that is saying, "Oh, let's let's do it here. Let's put the money here." I can still say, "I got this awesome investment that my buddy has, and I'm going to take a loan out." I don't have to. I mean, you know, I I would talk to you about it probably, but it's my money. I I can put it there. Grandma, right? you have liquidity, right? Use and control. Yep. So if you see, so only thing Curtis wants to do is make sure that you understand the difference between an asset and a liability. Right. We'll talk about it. I will say, well, how are you going to pay it back? But other than that, have at it. You know, that's the thing is be, because see, investing, let's talk about investing for a sec, because I teach three rules of investing, right? So you need to have liquidity, use of control of your money. That's why I like saving. And you don't have that with a 401k. You're giving up control to Wall Street for 30 years. Okay. Right. Um in postponing taxes, not deferring taxes, right? That's another story. But, but what happens is we talk about investing. What is investing? Investing, the three rules of investing we teach are uh, invest in which you know or invest in knowing or invest in knowing the operator if you're going to do syndications, right? That's the investment you have to make, get, knowing the, the operator. And um, invest in which you can influence it if you're starting out smaller invest in which you can influence the outcome of um or does it cash flow because if it cash flows your risk is going down because you're getting your capital back and don't chase returns and what we find is that most people are chasing returns so when i say i'm the defensive coordinator i want you saving i want you understanding how money works and then i want you when you see an opportunity I want you to have the money to do what you want to do, you know, yeah. and 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 put money in something that, you know, investing. I tell people, look, milk the cow, don't slaughter, right? So buy something that you can that generates cash flow and not just a pop where you put in, you know, you want to buy low, sell high because you always have to do that. So you can do some of that, but you know, if you want to become financially free, you have to focus on cash flow, buying cash flowing assets. Man, I. I've loved our conversation. Um, I, I love the infinite banking concept and wh whatever you call it, be your own banker as Nelson Nash did, or, or be your own uh, money manager, like, like Curtis may have said, um, mm -hmm. you know, I, I just love that concept. Um, I, I, you know, it, there, there's so, it, it's just a totally different strategy, different mindset, but at the end of the day, you can control it. You can influence it as opposed to, giving your money to someone else, they're making a lot of money on it uh, and and you have no control over it. They're holding it for decades, not years, but decades. Right. 
And with this, uh, you can velocity, you can use and you own part of the company, right? right. Because you we only use mutual companies. Right. So I want the companies to be profitable because that's where my dividends come from. So we're all on the same page, right? Yep. Because I'm your part when you own a mutual company or we only use mutual companies for the strategy, you're part owner. So you're participating in the profits of the overall company, but then you get to use the money for your business. Yeah. For your needs, for your whatever, with with a with a fax or phone call, depending on the amount. So it's it's you have complete control, and um, you know it's 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 awesome. So everything you're doing, if you own the bank and you control the financing, everything you do gets more profitable. Love it, um, Curtis. I know we have a few minutes left. I want to ask you about a recent book that you've read or listened to that really stands out to you. I know you mentioned a few on on the show already. Uh, do you have oh, anything yeah. else? Um, I tell you, one of the books I'm really geeking out on right now is um, "10x is Easier Than 2x" by um, is it Benjamin, Dr. Benjamin Hardy. Yep. Uh, Boss Moves by Myron Golden. Okay. Uh, one of the books that's the foundation of our our strategy is called "Principles Based Financial Planning" by Kyle Christensen. Okay. And so we've kind of, you know, uh, uh, he's actually my coach and I've kind of, he's introduced me to that concept. And then I've kind of married infinite banking in that, you know, okay. I'm, I'm, I don't have any original thoughts, but I can take your thing and make it my thing, you know? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, uh, those, those, you know, what happens, you have to get, I'll let you look back and look at my bookshelf, but, yeah. uh, um, what am I reading right now? Um, I'm a nerd. So it's either economics, marketing. I'm really a marketing geek. So I'm rereading Expert Secrets right now. Um, because I'm in a funnel hacking world. So I'm, you know, I'm I'm really into uh I told business owners, you don't understand you're in the marketing business. You and to me, marketing means education, right? So yeah. I'm really in the education business. I'm not in the convincing business. I want to teach is I always tell people it's your money, not mine. And I, I want you to uh um um you know, be able to communicate it. I, I, one of the Rich Dad books I like is Rich Dad's Guide to Investing. Okay. And who took my money? Are uh, and Tom Will Wright's new book, the um, the eight investments the government will pay you to make. Okay. So that that you know that kind of stuff, understanding that those things because you got to understand the rules, right? It's hard to win a game when you don't know the rules. And most of us are you're playing by the wrong rules. We're playing by the middle income rules, what I call right. the accumulation theory. Uh, but we don't really understand the rules that the institutions or the principles that wealthy, why they stay wealthy, like the success these clues. Yep. And, you know, I try to I've tried to restructure our practice so that we teach that stuff. But I like working with me. Curtis wants you to read a book a month on money, right? A, mo- a money. Uh, I want you to work on your skills, negotiations, sales, marketing, leadership, right? Because skills is what make money because your number one asset, Charlie, is you, right? You got to invest in your mindset, your skill set and your network. Uh, and and then your number one investment, in my mind, are your businesses or are intangible things that throw off a check. And then your network, who do you know and who knows you? So if you're if if you don't have any money, Invest in your mindset, invest in who you hang around, invest in mentorship. Yeah. Um, and that will uh um that will grow your revenue. And then you'll have some money to save. And now you can call me. <laughs> no, <just kidding>. awesome. <laughs> um, I know we didn't talk about this, but uh you do have an article that talks about uh infinite banking uh in tandem with real estate. Um, so I'm gonna put that in the show notes, but that would be a really good um uh Yes. Yeah. I have that. I'm going to send you another one. Also, I have one called uh, the value of liquidity where we get some case studies of of what you're talking about, of how you can use it and different things that you can use the the money for while it's in the insurance. So I think then the people and then don't substitute that for getting a book. (laughs) Okay, but this will be a short primer so you can get your mind around it and uh, um, and, you know, check out our YouTube channel. And I want you on our mailing list. We'll throw out stuff out there. If you, if you, okay. you know, want to check this stuff out, then, you cool. know, I'm all about education. Awesome. What's the best, uh, best way for people to reach out to you? If, if they so want to the more? best way is to go to a uh, practical www.practicalwealth.net. Um, 
and that will take you through through that you can get to our show my youtube channel um there's a, a button that comes be the bank and then we'll send you out a, a short mini lecture that okay. will that will break it down um you know i got my content hub so that's like the one stop our blog is on that you know i'm you know so you can get there and then i'm you know we're on ig we're on youtube um and then it, oh so i'll give you the thing here's where they can get to the uh, the other report i'll put the, i'll give you on for the show notes but if they want to get to the um the um what is it what did i call the book what did i call it the um creating wealth with the velocity of money okay um uh if they will text be the bank all caps all one word to five five four 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 okay and we'll, cool. we'll get that out to them awesome Man, Curtis, thank you so much for being here. It's been awesome talking to you. And um, we'll make sure all the uh, practicalwealth.net, uh, your YouTube, Instagram, uh, that phone number, uh, 5544, text be the bank to 5544. We'll make sure all of that stuff is in the show notes. I've, man, I've loved talking to you and uh, learning more about this and, and more about your company. Uh, thank you so much for being here today. It is my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thank you for listening to today's show brought to you by H&K Investment Group, your home for passive investing. If you want to learn more about how you can invest with us, please check out our website at hkigllc.com. Don't forget to like this episode and subscribe to our podcast. Please leave us a review to let us know how we are doing. Feel free to connect with me directly on LinkedIn or Facebook. As always, I'm your host, Charlie Hardage. Catch you next time. Thank you.